Hey everybody, happy Monday. This is Meredith Miller here, your inner integration coach, answering more questions for Sonic Q&As. Remember, the link is in the video description below if you'd like to submit a question, one to two short paragraphs, please, and I will read those on air. If you would like more personal help, you can submit a personal email support request on my website, innerintegration.com. I'll respond to you within 48 hours with an in-depth email response to your question with some suggestions and practices you can do for the reading, other resources, etc. If you would like more in-depth personal work, you can book a strategy session with me that's 90 minutes on Skype. We go deep into what's going on in your life, what you're trying to understand, what you're trying to resolve, where you're stuck, and we'll identify some steps that you can start taking to move forward to transform your life. So this question says, thanks for all your great videos. I am now two years out of a relationship. I struggle with how to think about the narc now. I totally get that no contact is the only thing that works, and I have moved on in my life and I'm pretty happy. However, I have very conflicted feelings in that he practically destroyed me towards the end, but I am the person I am now thanks to him. During our time together, he pushed me and although this was usually totally abusive, which I can now see, it also helped me grow and I did things I wouldn't have dared to do previously. I grew so much during our time together and during the breakup. So sometimes I feel I should be grateful I experienced it all. Other times I hate him or feel sorry for him. I spend more time ruminating on my feelings towards him than I would like. I think I'm still trying to find my own closure. I would be grateful for any advice. So first of all, great job with no contact and for moving on, like cheers to moving on, awesome. Great job recognizing your growth and extracting the treasure from that trauma moving forward. Awesome, right? So maybe don't give him so much credit, right? Because it was you who chose to grow. Personal growth, personal development, this is an option. It's a choice and it's not a choice that everyone chooses. You chose that, right? You chose to turn that situation into something positive. That was all you, baby. That was not him. Okay, so maybe don't give him so much credit for that. Recognize that you chose that and that was a hard choice because personal development is not easy. Healing is not easy. It means facing all that stuff inside yourself that you don't want to face, right? And you're doing the work. That's fantastic. You know, the dark forces, the demonic energy, whatever you want to call it that is animating people who are without conscience, who act in these ways, I think it's more about the energy than the person, right? And if you look at the bigger picture and you realize that this energy can come through different people in your life and it can, you know, try to stop you and it can try to cause you to doubt and to fear and to quit and to give up and it can try to do all of these things but really all that energy can do is delay you from the inevitable which is you answering your life calling your mission and purpose in life that is the blessing of that energy showing up in your life it's like lighting a fire underneath you until you do something different until you recognize that that crisis is both a danger and an opportunity to transform your life. Don't give him so much credit. Recognize that that is a natural force in the universe that seems to be working through these people without conscience, right? It's not the person so much. It's that energy that's behind them, right? Why does God allow evil? People ask this question. I don't know. I don't know God. But if I look at the universe and I see that there are these equal and opposite forces, right? There's the good force, there's the evil force, whatever you want to call it, the dark and the light, right? We assign these values to it based on the human mind, these judgments. This is good, this is bad, this is dark, this is light, right? But if you look at it like the light is your path, the light is your truth, that's where you're going in this life and it's the whole reason you were born because you are light. You are light, right? So this force is awakened and it's like this equal and opposite force and the bigger you need to shine that light, the bigger that dark force comes at you because it's momentum, excuse me, it is not momentum, what is the M word I'm looking for? Motivation, excuse me, it is motivation to move you forward in your life. Right? And all it can do is delay the inevitable. 
Don't give up. If you give up, you're giving into that force. If you stop, you're allowing that force to win, right? So choose yourself instead and recognize that that force cannot stop you. That force cannot derail you from your mission and your purpose in this life unless you allow it to. Unless you allow it to, unless you choose not to answer your calling. So, you know, again, don't give him credit for your work. It's good and it's healthy that you are now at the stage of your healing that you can look at that and extract the treasure. Because if you think back to the beginning and when most people are in the beginning of the healing stages, it's like impossible to see the good. It's like, how do you see the good in all of that, right? It's just so overwhelmingly bad. But then at a certain point in the healing journey, you start to recognize the gift, the treasure inside the trauma, and you learn how to transmute that into a new sense of passion and purpose moving forward. That was the whole premise of the book I wrote, Freedom from the Story, From Trauma to Passion and Purpose, right? It's like all these bad things happen to us in life and it's horrible when we're going through it and we don't wanna repeat it and we don't wish it on anybody else. But the thing is that it all has purpose, right? Not because you're a bad person and not because you deserved it, but because you have a calling to answer in this life. And it's your choice whether you answer that or not. And everybody has their own unique calling and no one can tell you what yours is. You know that deep inside your heart. And if you haven't discovered that yet, keep digging inside your heart because that's the whole reason that your soul chose to incarnate. That's what I believe. I'm not telling you that you have to have the same beliefs. I'm just telling you what I believe and how I look at that right? So it's awesome that you're healing yourself, that you're recognizing the good. Just don't give him the credit of that. Recognize you are doing that. You chose to take the reins of your destiny in your hand and transform your life. And that was not an easy choice. And it is not easy work. And you know that after two years, you know, that's not easy work. That's you, baby. That's all you. So don't give him that credit. You know, you chose to transform yourself and to find the strengths and the courage within you that you didn't know existed before that happened. So recognize that's you and don't give him all that credit. You know, you can, you can see the benefit in it. You can have the gratitude for the experience. That's good. That's really gonna move you forward in life. You know, that was week 12 of my sauna series that I created. Week 12 is gratitude is the attitude, right? It's week 12, it's the last one. It's not way at the beginning, right? Cause you can't get there in the beginning. You're, you're quite far away along in your, in your recovery journey. That's awesome. You know, it just sounds like there's this little part of you that's holding on to him. Like maybe it's just because you wanna give him credit for that. So recognize it's not him, it's you. You're the one who chose to transform your life. I'm sending you a big hug.